Welcome back to Central Coast Disc Golf. We are 45 minutes southeast of Portland. We are about an hour southwest of Mount Hood at one of the most beautiful places for the game. This is the Beaver State Fling final nine holes. I'm Nate Perkins joined here with Ella Hansen. This has been one of the better tournaments I've been a part of and Jennifer Allen is playing out of body. She has a two stroke lead with nine holes to go. Holland Hanley is playing amazing disc golf. Ella, is this crazy or what? This is crazy. And and like I said at the end of last uh, front nine, it's really turning into a two horse race, but a lot of really, really great disc golf, great putts, great throws, and really just a beautiful day, fun disc golf watching. Thanks for joining us. Hole 10, par 4, 550 feet, very wide open. There's out of bounds on the left side and some trees on the right that you just want to avoid. But the up, if you're in the middle of the fairway, the approach shot is very simple. And this really, really feels like a must-get birdie, especially for the lead card. Holland's got quite a bit of swagger right now yeah look at that strut up to the front of the <laughs> t-pad there she has been playing some good discs this final round that looks good gets yeah that's totally fine a little bit left side but she should be able to throw either a uh, backhand hyzer forehand around the right or left side of that bush so have you and Jin had the chance to talk about her world record? Does <laughs> she acknowledge that you could potentially break it and that you might be trying to? <laughs> we Yeah, we chatted about it. Um, we played together on Friday, round one of this tournament. Okay. And she just actually was right on this hole, on hole 10. She asked me about, uh, you know, I, I unofficially threw further than her world record um, a couple weeks ago and yeah she asked me about it asked how the wind was and she seemed excited for me I mean you know I think she still has a lot of distance in the tank but I think I'm probably the furthest thrower in the FBO division right now um, but yeah I mean Jen is Jen's a very supportive person so she was she was excited for me which is really nice cool well thank you for sharing I love that Just a little short there for Cat on the upshot. Little standstill Berg here from Maria. That's, I mean, perfect. <laughs> unique this to Berg. Absolutely, the one speed. Really, one speed. I, th I believe it's one speed. Yeah, yeah. it just. Falls right out of the air. Not quite as glidey as, you know, say the glitch, which is also a one speed. Oh, Holland going to leave herself a circle's edge putt there with Jin being just outside the bullseye. It's like Princess Leia in pajamas here. <laughs> I don't understand how Cat and there's like a couple other players who completely like block the basket with their disc in front of their eyes. Calvin oh, Heimberg? Yeah. Holland is frustrated about that miss. I mean, it feels like a bogey. Yeah, absolutely. 550, par four. This one, in the way. this one feels like a must get, absolutely. And really one of the easiest holes to birdie on the course, so... Wait, aren't you blocking the basket with your putter sometimes? I do it like kind of on the upswing, but not okay. when I'm staring it okay. down. <laughs> Jean, she's been getting pretty pumped up about her mm -hmm. circle one makes this weekend. Mm -hmm. The excitement when it yeah when she realizes yeah. that she makes it, she's been fist pumping and I think maybe after you know having putting yips and not feeling confident, just getting excited about every make very fair yeah 
cat not too stoked on the par here. Maria tapping in a birdie hall and tapping in a par. A little surprised to only see two birdies for the lead card on there. But moving on to hole 11, of course, the Philo Albatross hole. It's a par five for the FPO, 850 feet. Big pushing hyzer off the tee. And the second shot, there's a lot of options of places where you can be to get up and down. Some players like to lay up a little shorter to that longer patch of grass. Some really trying to push up into this zone. Just want to make sure you're not stuck in a tree or in the rough and give yourself an angle to the basket for your third shot. I like these kind of holes where, you know, it's a very wide open tee shot, but it starts to kind of narrow in, especially as a par five. I think that's a really fun way to design a hole where, you know, it's it gets smaller and smaller as you get up to the basket. Destroyer there for Jin and a wraith here for Maria. Holland going nuke. Sounds right. Playing it a little mm. wider. Flipped up just a bit. That looks great. Where does Holland compare to, you know, yourself or a Jen Allen? I feel like she kind of, she's probably up there in the FPO division, maybe top five distance. I think so. I think so. Yeah. I mean, she absolutely can rip a disc. I think... She definitely has the furthest forehand on, on tour for okay. FPO and definitely top five or at least top ten backhand, but I think top five. Maria is also Ooh. one who kind of has that sneaky distance no, as she, well. She hits it hard, and actually I've been playing disc golf with Maria for, for some time now. She grew up in Dallas-Fort Worth, as did myself, and... Hmm. Holland, mm -hmm. I found out that I'm from 15 minutes down really? the street from, from Holland. She's wow. over there in Colleyville, Texas, which is not too far from where Paige Pierce is from. <laughs> Some in the water there, huh? <laughs> it's definitely a very sport-driven you know, community when you're growing up. I know Certainly. Holland played volleyball competitive yep. volleyball all through high school and uh, did she play in college as yep. well she played um for i believe ut dallas which mm -hmm. is a d3 school um yeah and they they were a pretty solid team she played all four years i believe and i think you can kind of see that and you know, we were talking a little bit about that wrist extension on her reach back i i kind of you know give her crap for it <laughs> having a floppy arm but you can kind of see how that might relate to you know, a volleyball swing <laughs> right there front and center little zone wrist <laughs> action oh, oh my gosh no. <laughs> all i'm trying to gauge what happened based off of wow. the crowd reaction you can go if you're ready. really can't look away from anything on this card right now we We've already got an ace. We've got a band hit for Eagle. And collectively, we're 15 under par through 11 holes. Jen pinched off here, going with the Sky Heiser. Trying to kind of play this boomerang shot back. Looks like she does a great job of it. Yeah, that's a tough, tough shot to execute. She does so well with the Firebird. Oh my goodness. This is just wow. bonkers. I <laughs> <laughs> wow. 
They are certainly putting on a show today. Cat just having to pitch out. It's not really often a gap if you are stuck in that kind of tree there. But solid putt. For the par. It looks like, is that maybe the first miss we've seen from Jen this round? From circle one. Yeah. I believe it is. Oh my. That was in the chains for so long. Lisa? An unfortunate reaction. Yeah. I mean, Maria does putt a little harder on, yeah. on those close range putts, but, you know, 99 times out of 100, those are sticking for her. So, unfortunate result there. After hole 11, you walk up the hill and you, you take this beautiful shaded trail that kind of walks you through a couple of the other par threes that we're not playing this year walk over to the tee pad you're looking down at the river it's the dream hole it absolutely is the dream hole 442 feet downhill the whole way one of those kind of holes where you can get there with a mid-range if you have a lot of power but you can really kind of throw any disc you see flex shots we see hyzer flip drifting shots a lot of different ways to get down to the basket. Oh, stay in the air, Hull and Hanley. Wow. Oh my goodness. What, what is that? Is that the, I vulture? Think that's the vulture? The UVZ vulture. Yep. And I'm pretty sure that one is flippier than her tour series. Um, I know she really loves that disc. She bags quite a few of them. This is varying stabilities. They're leaving the field behind, Ella. Yeah. Yourself included. Sorry, <laughs> but hey, it, it, reality is reality. Twenty-one under, nineteen under. Marie is at twelve on the same card. This is really high level. And you know, one of the one of the pros there for Holland is that you know she can really attack. She doesn't have to worry about being more conservative and trying to maybe save a podium spot you know she knows that she can be aggressive on her putts and not worry too much about the consequences so Jen kind of punched through and really well thrown there's a lot of spots in circle one here that are really difficult I feel like this this approach is it's flat ground, but it's dangerous in that way. If you land on the wrong side of the cypress, you could almost not have a putt. Yeah, there's like, definitely some spots here that like that's pushing it. That might be difficult. She might have a line. Especially on the right side of the green. Did she say, I want cool things to happen? I think so. We want some cool things to happen, oh. too. That's frustrating for Holland. Oh, that's really frustrating after such a beautiful shape off the tee. And really, you know, Jen left the door open on this hole to Holland. And, yeah, that can't feel too good. Look for a second, like Holland might get a stroke back, bring the lead just to one. Missing her putt, unfortunately, and Jen still holding a two stroke lead going into our last six holes.
The Wombat 3 pretty much goes right where you want to throw it. One of the most difficult shots to throw in disc golf is a perfectly straight shot. And the Wombat 3 does that really, really well. Hole 13, par 3, 310 feet, throwing uphill through this gap. You really can throw more of a stable flat shot and let it hyzer at the end or something flippier on hyzer and let it push up to the basket. This is a kind of shot where you don't necessarily see where your disc is landing. Off the tee, you can kind of just barely see the top of the band. Buzz here for Holland. She gave this a scare yesterday. She did. That's a little oh, too inside. And that's back to back mistakes there for Holland. Jen's still going with the T-Bird here. I know she had mentioned to you that she felt like it was a mid-range hole. And look at the ground play. I wow. Mean, the tree slows her down. She gets by it. The yeah. bush slows her down, gets by it. Yeah, that was looked a little inside. And Maria might do the same thing, similar. Scooting up there, kind of using those trees on the left as a speed bump. Cat catching a tree on the inside, but kicking up maybe to about a hundred feet. It's a nice little approach for Holland. And Nate, this actually played as the easiest hole for FPL. No. Yeah. No way. That is really surprising to me. Me too. <laughs> Little got little squirrel. That's got to be distracting. Where is that little guy? <laughs> distracting our girl Maria. Okay. There's a confident stroke right there. Not, not trying to get a par, but got to feel good to get save the par make a good putt and jen missing that 18 footer that's wow. another big opportunity slipping through her fingers from circle one you know i was talking about holland missing a couple opportunities but on this hole and on hole 11, Jen missing two 18, 20 footers that could have really solidified her lead a little bit more and made this a little less nerve wracking coming down the stretch. Oh. So both players still in it, going on to hole 14, par four, 575 feet, big left turn on the fairway, off the tee with a couple of trees you gotta miss, and then fairways curving back to the right up this hill into this protected green really takes an accurate shot to get up into this gap Colin going through the right side field goal a lot of hyzer, great shot, getting herself right in the middle of the fairway. God dang it, Jen. Jen doesn't quite get the firebird through the field goal and... Oh. oh. Neither does Maria. Cat is throwing a cut roller here. We saw her kind of mess it up on day one. She is really committed to this play. And 
Throwing that same roller disc. Does that get some flip? This is so special. Cat merch is... Look at Terry. Terry <laughs> shooting it down. He but loves Terry it. <laughs> Terry loves it. That wow. is, I mean, such a creative player. Cat merch. I Maria trying to throw scramble just a little too high. Doesn't get it turned over and... She's going to be pretty out of position with a tough approach into the green. Yeah, well played from Jin. I, I think it can be easy to to try and still attack, and you, that's when you kind of really get yourself in trouble here on the 14th, but she's just playing it out wide. Great oh, shot from Holland. Just outside the bullseye. I believe that was a force Sounds right. into the green. I mean, the difficulty of that cut roller is hard to even describe. Like getting a disc to yeah. travel 90 degrees left without, you know, overcutting it or having it like roll out right. early. Because it's, it's hard to even state how special that shot is. And look at her position, Ella. Wow. Oh, man. Oh, just no. a tiny it. bit low rolls outside of the circle. Looks really good out of her hand. And giving that a bit of a run. Oh, just a bit high. It's Holland getting the stroke. Taking one back up, and you know, Cat's hole right here, it kind of brings up a topic that I want to share with you guys about how, you know, disc golf, it's an art form, right? It's, it's a, it's a creative expression mm -hmm. yet. It also gets boiled down to just a number. If you didn't see cat's hole, you would have just thought that she threw a couple normal shots, <laughs> you know, missed a putt, played it for par, but no, she threw this incredible expressive artistic cut roller up the fairway and then cards just a par mm -hmm. and you know sometimes that can be like discouraging almost you know that you don't get rewarded for some of your amazing shots and yeah i just want to remind you guys to also enjoy the shots even if you don't score even if you bogey you can still like relish in the amazing shots absolutely absolutely and you know, this course one of the joys of it is it gives plenty of opportunity for that creativity and allows a lot of challenging holes that have different kind of tee shots, including this one. Holland playing the high forehand, just trying to get around the corner onto that fairway, executing it well. She's not trying to bite off a ton of distance off the tee, just throwing what she feels is her most consistent shot. Oh, and Jen mm. getting a nice little forward skip just in front of that tee pad for the second half of this hole. Go, baby, go. Oh, that looks a little go. inside, but scoots to the front side of that tree. Very flippy disc for Maria. Overturns it a little bit. So she'll be obstructed. Yeah, this is a kind of hole. I mean, if you really wanted to get aggressive on this one, you absolutely could throw a, some sort of roller off the tee. Is that prime time position right there, Ella? 
think so. It might be a little bit on the short, kind of pinched off side, but she should still have a solid chance to get up into the green. Yeah, it was just such a pretty shot from Holland. The way that she like <laughs> followed through and everything, it was so committed and I think that's a force that she's throwing. And that is just a little overturned and it is a tricky up and down from right there. It really is. Maria going back to the forehand. Gets a weird skip. That got, looked like it was kind of going to skip up into the gap. Instead skipped forward. Cat catching some foliage, but getting up to the top. Oh, so Jin had a little back door and she wow. hits it. It's going to be a scary putt. Okay, I was wrong about Holland. She threw a perfect shot. <laughs> Giving herself a jump putt approach. Yeah, perfectly played hole there. Yeah, I mean, you can't really draw it up much better than Holland. And Holland and I kind of, <laughs> we talked about this a little bit because I went backhand off the tee and then forehand approach and she went the opposite. But I think we both executed it pretty well. And oh, Maria airballing over the top of the basket. That's a hard spot to putt from. Very guarded right there. Yeah, and with such a slope too, it's kind of hard to figure out exactly how much height to give your disc. Nice birdie. Cat? Big time 15 footer right there. Looking back down the hill. Yeah. Really not the time to air ball. And that's the kind of sh putt that if you miss it, it's going to be at least a couple extra strokes. This green, a lot of wood chips on it, keeping it not muddy, but definitely they can be pretty slippery. <laughs> okay, so times are pretty tense, but they're still having fun. Absolutely. Looking like a little kid right there running down the hill. It's hard it up to speed. not let yourself just run down that hill, to be honest. <laughs> yeah, no, I sprinted every time. And Holland is eight under for the round. She's one back of Jennifer Allen. We have three holes left. This is an exciting finish here. What do we got on 16, Ella? 16, pretty straightforward. Another backhand hyzer off the tee. Bit of a lower ceiling though, so you can't push it too high. And then this pin position has been pushed back from previous years towards the road, making it a little bit more of a touchy approach shot really having to weave through those trees and slow your disc down before you get to that out of bounds mm. like a whip that is pretty ideal that. from she, holland she's so smooth with that hyzer she is you know Jin has a little bit more of like that kind of aggressive reach back honestly I've always said that I feel like she has the fastest reach back. Mm -hmm. Like no one, it's almost a little violent at times, but she seems more of like that power player, like Holland, powerful, but has just, seems a little bit more, you know, finesse with her, her upper body. Yeah. And you mentioned her backhand looking kind of like a whip. I think that that's a really good way to put it. I feel like uh, Jen's kind of, Gives me more of like a pendulum kind of swing, mm -hmm. especially on mm -hmm. that reach back. And it's just different, different styles. And that's yep. just like why our game is so cool is you don't have to converge on one style of throw to do it well. And 
And yeah, we saw, you know, four discs in pretty much the same oh, spot. Oh. No. Oh, and that was was parked. That was so parked. <laughs> I'm with you, Holland. That just pushed a little too straight for a millisecond. And window is now open. Oh, she's going backside. Sit down. What? Did that roll onto the curb but not off of it? Oh my goodness. I... I'm second guessing what I'm seeing, but I'm pretty sure it rolled onto the curb wow. and was centimeters from falling off the wow. back end. And I have the goosebumps right now just oh thinking God. about, <laughs> you know, her, her, you know, her mother being with her and just her having this like magical kind of run mm -hmm. and that was like a magical little moment Absolutely. right there i mean that that disc was on the curb ella yeah i thought there what was no happening? way that it was gonna stay safe but wow peace and love from cat merch all the time and just outside the bullseye so she and Jen will both take pars here keeping the difference at one stroke solid birdies for Kat and Maria Moving on to hole 17, the evil genius hole. One of the toughest holes, you know, on tour in general, I think. Uh, really just want to push straight down this gap. Ideally finish a little bit left towards the road, making this second shot over to the second section of fairway a little bit easier. And giving yourself a chance potentially to attack the green for a four. We we'll probably are gonna see most players laying it up on to that short side of the island. But we did see Jen getting onto the island, both the first and second rounds, getting the birdie round one, missing the putt on round two. And I'll be curious to see if Jen sends it today if she's going for the island again feeling that confidence or if she'll lay it up and Nate, i feel like this is really the pivotal hole for the tournament i mean hole 18 we saw jen bogey it the first two rounds but it definitely doesn't provide as much of a stroke swing as this hole does no, you're you're totally right, Ella. This is a monumental moment. El pardon me. Chris. Holland, just a little early. It actually kicked out to a decent spot. Jin just pures that destroyer right there. And oh. it's hard to really say, you know, which shot is more important than the other. But this second shot is probably the most dangerous one. Pushing over the road. Come on. Skip. Wow. Just short of the curb, skipping off the road. It was tracking for the curb the entire way. Hits just before it. There is magic all around us right now. That puts so much pressure on Jin, knowing that Holland is now in the as good of a position as you can really ask for on that second shot yep she's going destroyer she's sending it oh yeah she's got not a, a ton of turn yeah that's safe but it's it's really tough over there you're kind of forced in into a layup 
Yeah. What, what do you think? Yeah, I think so. And that is not coming back. Playing the Heiser, looking like a par play for her. Hmm. Audible snap there on the putter <laughs> throw. Looks like she was going for it. Went a little early, got a good kick down, just short, right on the front side of that safe fairway. And Jen. Going first between her and Holland, just pitching up. That's safe, but she still has 70 feet or so, and it can get a bit touchy. And Holland, I believe, going for it there, just catches no. a branch, drops was, out of bounds. Did that have the distance, you think? I think if it didn't hit the branch, it did, but it would have been pretty close. No way. Holland is now going to be putting from you know, 45, 50 feet for her par. Yep, for her par. But I mean, I think that was the right decision to make. It's kind of tough to decide at that point if you're going to go for it, especially with all the out of bounds. But Oh, she had to send it. Yeah. Absolutely. Had no question. She's playing for the win. Had to go for it, and Jen is now under the basket for her par. And that slope behind the basket is pretty unforgiving. Yeah! Paul and Haley is not done. It is not over, Ella. That is as much emotion as we've ever seen out of her. She is pumped. That was such a sick putt. Were you there for that one? Yeah, I was right right there behind the basket. I was so hyped. Oh my gosh. For my buddy the, Holland. <laughs> that is insane. That is a big moment for her career. Absolutely. 50 footer to keep it alive? Keeping it alive, keeping herself one stroke back. Turbo. It's so wow. wow, exciting! <laughs> it is, it's I'm it speechless. is exciting. I'm it is exciting. So yeah, I really am. I know it's my job to kind of not be speechless, but <laughs> it's it, it really has been just one of the best Beaver State flings I can recall. It's one stroke final hole part four very attackable here and, and you know elevated pin adds just enough drama you want to get this one close yeah i, I feel like it, it's one of the easier part fours it is just as far as on paper the distance holland looking good heiser out of the hand yep and she's just looking for you know, 3.30 off the tee to, to, to kind of flick the zone in, right? Absolutely. And this is a big shot for Jen. She went out of bounds left and then out of bounds right. Bogeyed both days, but that is looking very solid for her. And the, the difference is that, you know, Holland's got that kind of automatic left to right zone shot with the forehand. Jen... Is probably going to be throwing like standstill putter turnover. Right. Pretty high level shot to attempt. Yeah. Yeah. This is going to be a pretty stock shot for Holland. I mean, you know, Jen absolutely can fillet those angles for sure, that those left to rights, but having that speed control on Holland's side will definitely 
play to her advantage. I think Holland's going first. She is a little bit shorter than Jin. Playing the big hyzer. Oh. Just a little tight. A little inside, but I mean, that's at circle one. Yep. Maybe 24 feet. And Jin is going standstill. Putter. Gets it a little tree love. Yeah. Kicking herself to kind of a similar position as Holland. So I, uh, I think Holland's going to be putting first. Yes. Looks a little further away, so she's going to have to try to put this putt in to put pressure on Jen to make that for the win. Here's Holland. Ooh, Having to straddle distracted. out. And there are some low hanging branches there that could potentially get in the way. Oh, man. Hitting right side chains. Not quite enough, though, for Holland. There's a lot of chains. And that should just about do it. I mean, Jen can lay up for a par, seal the deal. Wow. Oh. And what a performance from Holland Hanley. I, I think if you, you know, if you said to the rest of the field, hey, 21 under, <laughs> How do you think that's going to do? <laughs> I think a lot of people would say that that would be the clear winner. Yeah, yeah. I mean, that's a, that's I would say we that. don't see often. No, not often. And this is, you know, a new layout, the, the Milo McIver gold layout. You know, not totally sure how it was going to play. Definitely scorable for the FPO field. Jen... Going for the putt. A little surprised she's not laying it up. Maybe. What's going on here? She makes it. <laughs> Seals the deal for the win. Wow. What? Puts it on the pole. Yeah. This, this is an unforgettable experience. I mean, Jennifer Allen is a major champion in the Masters division. Uh, but this is, this is the biggest one of her career. Absolutely, yeah. I mean, you know, like I said at the beginning of the round, it is a silver series, but the Beaver State Fling is a legendary tournament. This course is legendary. This property just makes you feel some type of way, you know, and what a good performance from Jen, wire to wire, getting some love from her daughter and her friends. 42 years old. She's a mother. She is an inspiration. Absolutely. Absolutely. Really, st what a round for Jen. Starting it off with the ace and then that string of birdies after. And, you know, she struggled a little bit in the middle, missed a couple of putts, but was really able to keep it together. Put together a solid round to seal the deal. What does it mean to come here to such a beautiful place, to play here in Oregon where you're gonna now go try and vie for a master's major in just a few days? What does it mean to take down a victory here? Um, just to take down the victory, nothing Nothing else matters. I'm not looking past um, this week. And I always come here and I feel like I played well. Like I played with a broken back last year and still cash. Like I love this place. Um, it's beautiful and just like it's made for, like the shots are just, I feel like made for me. I throw like four discs out there. 
and uh, I'm proud of myself. Like we all know I've struggled with confidence and I could have laid that up and I didn't and I'm proud of myself. And I told my amazing caddy that JB and my mom are sitting up there watching me all week long. So it means a lot. Two of your biggest supporters, JB, your mom, everyone else that's been watching all these years to pull together a victory here. You lost your mom a few months ago. Anything else you'd like to say? No, nope, just, um, I love you guys. Thank you so much for all the support. Jennifer Woo! Allen, your champion here at the Beaver State Fling. Wow. Uh, <laughs> look at that. Look at the star followed by three birdies there for Jen. She shoots an eight under par to take down her first Disc Golf Pro Tour event. This has been an absolute pleasure, Ella. Absolutely. I, I love working with you. I love this game so much. The Beaver State Fling Unforgettable Tournament. Guys, the crew at here at Central Coast Disc Golf, they're working through the night to edit this coverage that they're filming all day long. Give them a like, subscribe to their channel, leave them some love in the comments. And from Ella Hansen and Nate Perkins, uh, you can go follow us on Instagram. I'm the Perks of Disc Golf. I'm, Ella. I'm One Throw Ella. One Throw Ella. Go show us some love. And it's been an honor to uh, work on this coverage. And we will see you next week in Washington. Love you guys.